Hello, and we are back uh, for, uh, let's say, the, the segment session about, uh, um, especially about uh, insurance and industry APIs. Uh, you are in stage one, and we will have uh, as a speaker, Alan Knabe, uh, CEO and founder of APIable.io, and Matt Carter, CEO and founder of Cognitive Risk, who will talk with us about driving API adoption in insurance. So let's have them coming on stage. Hello, Alan. Hello, Matt. How are you? Hi, Matty. We're fine. Good, perfect. That's that's a great uh, uh, sign that uh, your enthusiasm for this <laughs> talk. For this talk, uh, you will tell us about uh, driving API into in insurance. In insurance, I invite you to share your slides. Perfect. It's full screen. It's completely readable. The stage is yours for twenty minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Matty. Um, right, thank you, everybody, for joining our session uh, between. Alan and I, we're going to just walk you through a little bit about the insurance context and some technical context. So at Cognitive Risk, um, we speak about operating in a space where insure meets tech. And today, obviously, I'm the insure side of that. And Alan will go on to the tech side, drive the tech side. A little bit about me. Um, I'm just going to, I'm more of an evangelist trying to sort of demystify technology and, and connect the dots. I've been in the insurance and technology industry for sort of 30 years. Um, not a developer, never have been really, but I've always stayed the sort of 60-40 split between business and technology. So um, I'm I'm interested in driving the value of technology, not the mechanics. And so APIs sit nice and firmly into the into that sort of sweet spot about what, what technology can do, but giving it some real business context. And um, Alan can talk for himself. Yeah, hi, I'm Alan. Um, as Mehdi mentioned, I'm the CEO and co-founder of APIable. Um, we aim to make organizations API able or API led um, by providing an API portal as a service. That's one of the key components. Um, if you have an API platform, you should have an uh, API portal to, to expose your, your APIs. So I, I've been working for like 20 plus years on the IT side, so more technical, but more recently coming across to the uh, product management um, area and working with APIs. Um, yeah, recently working with um, a couple of insurance companies. Um, so I hope to be able to share a little bit of uh, that knowledge too. So I'm going to I'm going to start by focusing more on the the, the insur through the insurance lens. Um, and, and effectively, as we, those of you who know insurance, they, they love an acronym and, and acronyms effectively fill the industry, um, much to the confusion of many and, and, and sort of uh, safety of others. But API has become another widely adopted acronym into the lexicon of insurance, really. Um, and what, what that has is it, it, it talks about, and I've seen it through years, I'm looking at... Um, uh, listening to APIs be spoken about from developers, then APIs get spoken about in insurance context through keynotes, then you start to hear CEOs talk about it, and then you hear other people talk about it because the CEO is talking about it. But the problem with acronyms in insurance and API is that it, it doesn't really provide any context, um, and it can somewhat be misunderstood as to its value, and that's what we're going to start to, to talk about and explore a little bit more about whilst it's widely used in insurance and, and effectively APIs in insurance is the proverbial iceberg. You know, it, there are many, many used underneath the waterline. Insurance as a sector is really, really adopting APIs in a, in a very, very uh, powerful, in-depth way every day. But And they're performing all sorts of functions and delivering all sorts of capabilities, which is, which is good, right? I mean, that's what we want. But, but the question is, is the insurance industry maximizing the opportunity of, of APIs and speaking, um, speaking about them? So what we're going what I'm going to focus on is effectively looking at the, the context of, of APIs. And, and whilst APIs are adopted, they're very much behind, uh, behind the scenes and under the water. And it's about trying to bring them to become more publicly available to be consumed and understood by more within the, the industry, not outside of pure development. Um, and as I say, there are you know there are many APIs, there are many API vendors in insurance, but there are arguably not enough API strategies in insurance. And that's 
may be part of the hindrance to, to driving greater adoption. Um, so, but, so how do we drive on adoption and, and how do we get, you know, how do we actually get uh, the, the concepts or the capabilities of APIs passed from uh, the developers um, to the business or even out to citizen developers? Um, so there is some good stuff. I mean, you know, they are, as I said already, they are, they are widely used. Um, property characteristics are becoming ever increasingly de uh, deployed and used with APIs. Vehicles, vehicle data, asset tracking, weather in being in, in weather is a big uh, factor within the insurance sector. So the property and casualty, and the ability to connect to services that deliver um, insights into weather is becoming ever more prevalent. Um, and and the the final two points about uh, you know, Internet of Things is driving on a greater adoption and a user experience. So all of those are the good, but there are still some uh, still some barriers to to really seeing APIs thrive in the insurance industry at, at large. And and that really comes from there's not an easy way to compare APIs. It becomes a very, uh, very uh, binary uh, situation between a and one API vendor and one uh, originator or developer, not understanding that there are uh, the breadth that's available and therefore understanding choice and giving people options will, will potentially drive on greater adoption. Um, within insurance in most sectors um, has a value chain. So having it has their own ecosystems and, and built and the need for APIs to be ever increasingly deployed to hand over, um, to build better integrations with your partners, your stakeholders, or your value chain is important. And, but that's not being done um, as prevalently as, as data augmentation is being used with APIs. The model can be quite expensive. And the final thing is actually back to the API strategies. Unlike banking and unlike some other industries, few corporate organizations, uh, and they are many in, in, in insurance, actually publicly provide some access to APIs through an, an API portal. And, and that's another blocker to, to driving greater adoption and, and something that we'll touch on throughout. So, so how do we how do we establish APIs to become these building blocks to, to, to drive some uh, innovation? So new propositions are coming thick and fast. And if you take the lens of the insure tech, so the next generation companies and the next generation thinkers, of course, they are all built with API first in mind. The insurance industry actually has to start to partner with more organizations to get some agility and some flexibility. And APIs are going to be critical um, to that. We need to get speed um, and we need to get the, the use of APIs to assist us as an industry to adopt new technologies. So it's all good. The, the direction of travel is, is, is correct. And APIs are well known, but it's just taking it out of effectively taking out the technology side and the developer and engineering uh, homes and bringing it and provide and bringing it into more business and business context and, and Alan will talk a little bit more about that so we need to move ourselves uh, and unlock ourselves from uh, the necessarily the, the, the domain of developers as we move from APIs as perceived as just code to APIs that have some sort of context and um, and this understanding of where code becomes language that can be understood across the business is, I think, one of the key factors to how we can help the industry at large um, drive on some greater adoption of APIs. Um, so quickly moving it through, how do we, how does, what does that look like in reality? Well, we got to, we need to assist the industry discover more APIs. So creating some directories or capabilities that that take us through and can we find the context that these solutions can be deployed against. We need to productize them so that we speak a, uh, a better language, a language that's understood by more uh, within the industry. 
so the, the values of the product and API portals, as we touched on, is, um, is, is, is critical to extending the reach uh, and building stronger relationships and the, these driving these uh, the, the ecosystem that already exists in insurance by nature, by, in a natural sense, driving that ever more into a more connected ecosystem and APIs are critical to that. So those are the three things that I think are important to to uh, align with, and and from an insurance perspective, it's around context, and it's around understanding the the taxonomy of of the sector. But that's notwithstanding that it's uh, you know the capability needs to also speak to the developers and engineering. They're going to make make the magic happen. So with that, we're going to talk pass over to Alan now to talk through the, that lens through the technology lens. Yeah. Thanks, man. So I, I'm going to take you through basically these, these like five things that um, I think you can do to drive API adoption. The biggest thing you can do, of course, as Matt just mentioned, is API product management. Um, API product management is, you know, leans heavily upon the existing product management methodologies that are out there. One key thing from that is knowing who the customer is. That's one of the things that uh, we get wrong. I'm going to touch upon that a little bit. Um, engaging with the stakeholders. Um, that was one of the things that came up already today. If you're not um, you know, at a senior level with your API strategy, um, with the, the, the C-level suite, um, you're going to end up with the you know, Kodak uh, digital camera. Aim, aim for a win, so aiming for something which is um, doable, um, not trying to you know, completely reinvent your industry, but start with something that you know, you're going to get, um, get done um, and giving a great user experience, developer experience. So a little bit about the API product management part, as I already said, you know, AP, you know, product management has been around for a long time, right? As soon as um, Ford had the first motor car, Heinz baked beans back in the day, you know, product is like a, a, like an ancient thing for humans now. And we've really gotten good um, at selling products, understanding what products are, who they're for, which segment, et cetera. Uh, and what, as an API product manager, I, I quickly learned that you need to treat the API as a product. We also need to lean upon the existing product management um, methodologies that are out there. Or you can look at, for example, the uh, API ops cycles um, methodology, which is a product management methodology created specifically for uh, APIs. So a little bit about the you know, who is your customer? So when we talk about APIs, we, we all think developers, uh, developers, 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 famous quote. Um, but, the, but the question really is, you know, who is the customer for you, uh, you know, in the insurance industry at this point in time, um, is the developer your, your customer? So if we look at definition of, you know, who a customer is, a customer is someone who pays for the product and the user does not. Might, might be pretty obvious, right? But what, what I see in the insurance industry is that um, we're, the, we're not quite there, as Will was saying earlier, at this, you know, distant innovation. I made some notes of this. So he calls it distant innovation, which is where you've got developers, um, you know, in their bedrooms, using your APIs to create new business models for you, et cetera, right? Insurance industry isn't there. I'd say insurance industry is still a little bit more on the near innovation, which is where you're making deals on golf courses, right? So the the next thing you need to do is get to this, um, you know, uh, where well, this near innovation where you have partner APIs, for example, and you're talking to, to your business partners. So, yeah, the developer is probably not your target customer. Uh, and by that, I mean is that the customer is probably um, maybe one of your existing um, partners that you integrate with. Um, or, or then when we're talking about you know, embedded insurance, it can be within uh, 
you know, could be Tesla or Uber or someone like that could be a potential customer. But those guys are probably more on the um, business side of things than on the developer side of things. Not that the developer is not important, very important as a user, and you must give a good user experience. Uh, another point that I raised was working with your stakeholders. This is really a key thing then in the insurance industry because, you know, having now worked with a couple of insurance companies, getting this part is extremely tricky because, you know, the company in some cases 250 years old, right? Um, and they're used to working in a, like an offline, non-digital way, doing things for the past 100 years like they are, right? So getting alignment for your product and again this is you know leaning upon core product management methodologies right it's a lot of product management methodology is about understanding the different types of stakeholder identifying the most important stakeholders uh, and making sure that they understand okay uh, what is it you're trying to achieve and support you in doing so if you don't have the support um, you won't be successful and it's about Okay, finding the people who understand what it means to be API first uh, and, and helping you drive that within the organization. A little bit about how we present the APIs. As I said before, you know, the user or developer experience is very important. Um, when we talk about developer experience, most people are used to like, you know, Swagger or open API specs for developers. And that's what, you know, how we represent products. Here we see a screen from Stripe that has, you know, one of the best developer experiences, in my opinion. The next one is also Stripe. Um, they, they have like two different experiences if you delve into their product. They have one which is very developer focused and gives the developer what they want up front. But they also have more of a, a customer marketplace type experience for for those guys who, who don't have a degree in computer science, but still want to be able to, you know, use more of a marketplace approach to, to consume their um, resources. So trying to, to bring all this together today, I wanted to introduce you, albeit very briefly, to, to a destination that we're, we're launching that trying to help bring insurers and APIs together and, and launching up API days today. So this is just trying to effectively walk the walk. So risk junction has been, has been launched as, as a destination to support the adoption of APIs and insurance. And, and much of it has been discussed for Alan and myself and, and, and other people. It's been a long journey, um, but it's about education of, around APIs. It's, it's about trying to, to drive API discovery within an insurance context. And, and, and arguably, and lastly, it's about promotion of APIs and, and building up greater adoption. So this is a this is the beginning of a journey. You know, the insurance industry is hundreds and hundreds of years old. These things uh, are oil tankers. They don't, they don't change overnight. But it's about bringing together the, the things that we've spoken about. So um, with that, we're going to effectively move on because I think we're just about bang in time we're going to move on to to take some q a um and so if anybody's got any questions on many i mean we've uh, while we're yeah well we have a uh, we have a few questions uh, uh following uh actually nigel comment this morning uh, there were one point where we say that we don't care about insurance as a service or we don't care about insurance product we should only talk about customer experiences and then customer experiences can be enabled by an API that provide that capability into into that topic do you agree with this customer driven and only so nobody looks for apis people look for experiences to deliver and of and oh it happens it can be there is an api for that yeah, I mean, um, from my perspective, absolutely. I mean, I'm a massive product management fan, right? And you don't do anything in, in product management until you have, you know, identified a problem that needs solving and you have a value proposition for that. In fact, even at Swisscom, we used to change the name of them from uh, APIs to VPIs, which was value proposition interfaces, right? So, um, 100% and, and I really feel that this kind of, you know, 
marketplace approach and hopefully where we get to with risk junction as well is really that we're we're talking about the value of the things right and people can find okay i've got this particular problem that needs solving and, and they're, they're searching upon the, uh, upon that yeah we have a question uh, for matt uh, which yeah. is what about open insurance and the adoption of an open standard interoperability interoperability for insurance companies uh, so as it i mean open insurance is uh, you know i'm a great fan of open insurance as the initiative but the insurance industry is a is a is a broad sector that hasn't yet suffered the the sort of big bang uh, approach that banking had to go through so without whilst the initiatives are worthy and and actually the end destination is absolutely critical to get some standardization across the industry the, the, currently there are uh, sadly too too many uh, competing um and uh, resistive factors in play but but things like thing, things api in general specifically risk junction to a degree will only benefit from standardization and, and open insurance initiatives and the like um and we can see as an industry we have to look left and right to other sectors and we can see the value that open banking has provided not really for the industry but for the industry's customers and that's what you know going back to the you know the solution looking for problems that's what the industry needs to focus on is that the open insurance presents itself and provides capabilities that apis will fuel in providing better propositions better experiences um for our customers and our customers are broad and, and varied so all for it but it's it's still a slightly uphill battle that there's a question also about the status of the open insurance initiative do you are, have you any date on this i missed the very first word the studies no, the, the status what's the status of the open insurance initiative i don't know if you're familiar with this initiative i am familiar with it um yeah. to be honest i can't speak in terms of the, the the here and now but i know that it's building a momentum uh and, and it's it's like everything in insurance it's um you know it, it the industry is quite fragmented we all talk about insurance it, it covers very many genres it, it, there are many actors and organizations um without i think the open insurance initiative is starting to speak with with regulators both in the uk and in europe and that will be the i think a, a key element to driving on its agenda and arguably its agenda is for the benefit of the industry so whilst it you know whilst there is traction there is belief um it you know it it will get with uh, more like-minded parties involved um towards towards being a you know the standard that the insurance industry is looking for now standards do exist so it must be it's, it's worth saying that the insurance industry absolutely has standards um doing many of the transactional elements but it doesn't necessarily have standards that uh are aligned to delivering a better customer proposition or customer experience it has some standards in just you know doing data elements and transactional processing sort of the the classic under the water line of capability so it, it open insurance initiative and there are some others you know I, i'm all for that uh, and I, it's a pushing can, but can be like pushing water uphill working in the insurance industry sadly yeah last question for alan or a new matt also if you want to, uh, to answer but uh, when you talk to api and api products to insurance market companies uh are they ma mature enough to understand I, i think some teams are mature enough to understand i, I think that we're, we're starting to get like an awakening now um it starts with you know possibly even one or two people right and then then it it, it grows out from there uh, i know from the work we've done together as well that um It, it takes time and it's about this stakeholder management and education and evangelism and uh, the, it, it's a lot of work to to get there but it's starting to wake up a little bit now hopefully we've got a lot of insurance uh, people here today who are you know also listening and, and can sort of carry this story forwards and it's, it's it's a bit of a movement and you know we've seen from the financial industry that 
you know, they're starting to really get some momentum going now. And I think insurance is maybe a little bit behind, but I, I really think this, this will grow and risk junction is definitely, um, you know, a really good starting point. And uh, thanks to Matt for creating that one. Yeah. Thank you very much, Matt and Alan. We reached our, our time together.